Wim Diddley and welcome to my garage. My name is Fred Hope. My username is Epo Durf, which is Fred Hope backwards. I've got a Honda Cub, it's a 2022 model. Even though the number plates is N21E, no, it's the 2022 one. And I'm gonna put a top box or a boot or whatever you wanna call it, carrying crate on there instead of the pillion seat because I'm not gonna carry a pillion um, and I want to be able to take more stuff with me. So if you wanna see an unboxing video, just get your own box and do that. This is the thing that I got, it's from the internet. It's a 65 litre uh, top box. It says ADV on the top, but it's just made by six year old Chinese kids like they all are. Um, yeah, the, if you imagine that, but inside a box and me taking it out, that box, then you know what to do. Well, you know what I did. This is the plate that comes with it. It goes plate and then That assembly on the bottom slides onto the plate and then you clip it down with that one there so you can take it on and off. It locks, it undoes, I'll show you all that later. <clears throat> so to get this on, we need a 10 mil spanner to take the pillion seat off. So that's what I'm gonna do first. Here we go. This is a 10 mil spanner. For any of our friends in America or places that use the Imperial system, this is a 10 mil spanner. Uh, I don't know what the equivalent is. The equivalent would be use a 10 mil. So we come over here and beneath this chappy here is uh, an array of four little bolts, which I can actually take you to go and see now. Let's go for it, guys. So hopefully up under here, you can see just just in there, just poked away. There she is, look, there's one. Do behave, there's one. There's another, and then it's mirrored on the other side. So I'm gonna get into this and uh, remove the pillion seat. So here I am, I'm just sitting down next to the motorbike. I'm using a, an empty iodine keg. Um, you might not be able to get those where you're from, um, so you could use it like a frozen deer or a bale or um, no, a fridge or something. Anyway, it turns on its side maybe. Here's the cushion in question. I'm just gonna, oh, there we go. Oh, they've put Honda on it as well. Fantastic, so I'm, I'm gonna do this blind whilst talking to the camera. What am I gonna say? I don't know. All I will say is there's not very much room, so I'm just, fondling around under here. Oh, for the spring. So obviously while you're doing this you can do like heavy breathing and all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah. Holy dick. Okay so you can see I have the dexterity of a drunk leper. Um, but stick with it. This is just going to be a bloke undoing some 10 mil nuts. Um, for those of you that like that, there's probably a video of that anyway. I'll undo them and show you what's underneath. I'm only halfway through. I'm two nylock nuts out of four down. Um, oh God. You can see why I'm not cut out for this. I'm using a magnetic tray so that I don't lose as much as I would ordinarily. Once two nylock nuts are off, this thing falls out. It's um, a piece of metal with some bits of rubber in, which I assume is sort of compensation for the arses that are smashing up and down on the seat. I also discovered that using a regular ring spanner was okay, but it was quite slow. Um, this is a four-ended ratcheting spanner from Baco. Both this spanner and this ratcheting spanner are not only amazing points of conversation if you're looking to um, get people to leave your house uh, or pick up a mate, so long as the mate is someone that's massively interested in tools. This is a Tang regular old um, spanner, ring end ordinary spanner. The highest accolade must go to this. It is Fred proof. Um, forget Royal Crests, forget warranties. If anything outlives more than a week or so with me, it must be tough. 
Uh, I've broken a claw hammer, a, a whole metal one. I've snapped a crowbar. I've burnt out core drills. I'm just a, a innate destroyer of stuff. And I'm not proud of it. It's just who I am. So Baco ratcheting spanners and Tang spanners are Fred proof. Buy them if you dare. Two more nuts to go. I would say if you only had to have one tool for doing that, it definitely has to just be a spanner, ring-ended spanner. Um, anything else is too fat to get in there. You're pretty much touching the bodywork. I love this noise, by the way. By the power of magic. Ooh. So that's what the underside of the seat looks like. That's the top side. Give it as a Christmas present. Keep it if you're going to sell the bike. Um, use it to start a fire in the rain because it looks like the materials are pretty uh, good for burning. So two more top hats. These little guys here. And then there's a little brackety thing there. I'm just going to grasp. So they're uniform. They're not... Um, Oh, they are. So remember, smaller one goes at the back, wider one goes at the front, and it's rubber down onto the bodywork. Is that metal? Not sure. It's quite cool. But anyway, big one at the back, small one at the front. Dartboard shaped pieces of rubber down onto the metal for when you put it back together. But for now, we don't need them. So for the next part, we've got a We've got to play the game where we figure out whether everything I've done to this point has been a complete waste of my time and money. So I'm going to attach the plate to the box and see if it fits on the back of the motorbike. There are some instructions inside the box. I might take a peek. Shh. Evening. So as is the way with all virtuoso um, people, I've been learning on the job. There's this thing wiggly metal. Uh, I'm going to call that a seagull. You've got a washer. You get little stainless bolts of two different lengths. So you go bolt and washer. Very nice, very good. That goes down through our plate here into the seagull which lives underneath and then there's a little nylock washer. Which goes beneath thus. So I'm just going to squiggle it together for you. So if you can now imagine between the seagull and the washer, which is pinched in my fingers, there is the existing rack on the bike. I've decided to make one modification to this because even though it says you can only take 10 kilos in it, I'm probably going to end up ignoring that quite quickly and fill it with wet sand because that's what adventure riders do and of course I am one because one of the stickers on there says ADV. I'm going to upgrade the washers just to give me a bit more uh, grunt. So the small one is the one that comes with this one slightly thicker and rounder so you're going to get more um, downward force which to my mind seems good. Uh, am I making it Fred proof? Quite possibly not. Will it fall off the first time I use it? Possibly. But I'm going to continue on my way. I've done two seagulls so far. Another two seagulls to go. Then I'm going to slide it back and forth until it sits in the right place. And then I'm just going to slot the box on and ride straight to Mongolia. Uh, all the shops. Actually all the petrol station tomorrow because I haven't got any fuel. Baby steps. It's all part of becoming a motor adventure cyclist biker here's a close-up look then so those are the four bobbins onto which our friendly top box will slot and these are the four bolts they're still mobile at the moment I haven't clamped the seagulls as they say in Sweden um, but I'm just getting it all lined up and sort of good and nice and fine good morning it's the next day I've had a piece of breakfast, which was a hazelnut croissant from Lidl, um, and also a cup of coffee. Pro tip, if you're in the garage and it's cold, which it is in here, 
you couldn't see my breath it's it's cold put your cup down on a piece of wood uh, or even better a piece of insulation foam because then your coffee or tea stays longer for warmer unless of course you want to drink it in a hurry in which case put it on an anvil or something in a tin mug and it will cool down really quickly <coughs> so the stage we got to last night before i just quit and went inside because it was cold and late is that the plate is on but it's movable it's also worth noting that the kit comes with a small allen key for doing up the little hooked piece that the box clips onto a bigger allen key for twisting these guys in and a tiny little thin spanner which i thought was as much use as tits on a snake but actually if you had very little room under your rack and you had to trim the bolts down a thin spanner would be useful i also thought that if you wanted to be belt and braces bomb proof triple sure that this wasn't going to fly off there's actually opportunities for putting far more than four bolts in you could put 12 in if you really felt like it is it necessary i doubt it i'm not going to be carrying that many um un sacks of rice and stuff in that box so probably not necessary but anyway <coughs> it's also worth saying that if you're in a mega rush you could do this job with like, an impact drive just blast it in and fly out the door if it's a, a blood bike or a pizza bike and you need to go to work in an hour and you've just bought it whatever you could do it really quickly but it's only a bit of buggering about in the garage so I'll just do it all with hand tools because it's more accessible as well and people are more likely to have certainly the little kit it comes with but an allen key a 10 mil spanner but equally if you've got loads of kit then you can go wild having just said I'll use the stuff that came with the kit uh, these are still hand tools and these are mint uh, I've had weirder stuff before it's just that this was on Reducto a chum sent me a link to it you can get them on Amazon comes with a tiny weenie ratchet which will go almost anywhere all the bits and this one comes with sockets and a screwdriver handle and an extendo thing it's made by Weera it's called a tool check plus and it's absolutely mint uh, I'm going to use it for twizzling really quickly you can see it's even a little tiny reversible ratchet with six degrees of um, tick so it's quite a fine ratchet anyway I'm going to whiz these up and uh, then we'll be ready to place the box. Well, here we are at six minutes past seven in the morning and we're ready for mounting already. Um, all I've got to do is ensure that this Wagulatory is in exactly the right place so that it pulls down nice and hard. But already we're at the stage where I haven't even finished my coffee. Thanks to this little weirdo chap, it is so much quicker. And even though I'm not in a rush, sometimes it's just nice to get a job done efficiently as opposed to blistering your fingers and whatever with um, provided tools. But the provided tools will do it. Uh, Let's place the box. Okay, nice bit of shine on my head there. Um, I had an idea. Basically, the wagulatory, the hook that is mobile, I'm not entirely sure where it's supposed to be. So I've done it up so that there's fr friction. The fr friction. Um, so that when I pull the clamp tight it should pull it out just enough and then leave it in the right place to give it its final tweak. Let's have a look. That should now be in the perfect position. Let's check. Here we are then. Uh, it's quilted inside. That, I mean it's nice, it's got pockets for taking photographs with you or documents if you're going to ride to 16 countries in a day or whatever you're going to do how big is 65 litres uh, from memory it's the size of rucksack that you're recommended to take on duke of edinburgh so this is perfect for doing the duke of edinburgh award even though he's dead um what could you put in there easily a whole turkey probably a live one 
four chickens, eight if you stamped on them. Uh, helmets times two, nice. Pants for two months if you only took pants. Any number of vegetables. I've got a leak here. Um, you can see it's it's wider than a large leak. That's a rattling fit there. What we call a rattling fit. Um, probably a thousand pieces of purple sprouting broccoli. Um, probably a thousand of those. If you only need one. Get it on Amazon. Um, just load of stuff. So this now makes this bike far more usable, not only during the day for doing shopping and going to the post office and whatever else, but also crouch down. Also for um, going travelling, going to different places, and very importantly, reviewing biscuits. So thank you for coming along. Also on the top here, you can see it's got loops and rails and clips and locks and all kinds of stuff, but hopefully this is a cool, useful addition, and even though it's definitely not cool, it might be a useful video if you're hoping to stick a top box on a motorbike, particularly a Honda Super Cub 125. Thank you very much for watching, I've got other videos about other stuff like biscuits and Honda Cub 90s and America and stuff like that. Thanks if you know me, uh, and if you don't know me and you're a stranger from the internet, uh, thanks for misusing your time so unwisely. Cheers.